Jeffrey Bezos literally went to space because he earns over $300 million a day and doesn't know what else to do with it. Meanwhile, Amazon Games can't program a running animation and are clearly using a server they found dumped in a canal somewhere. New world. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes. Today, we're going to be playing Amazon Games Studios' new MMORPG, New World. Now, in order to set our expectations correctly, let's remember the most successful game Amazon Game Studios has released so far, Airport Mania HD. In fact, it was so successful, it spawned a sequel. Then they started to work on the new Lord of the Rings MMO, right up until they decided to not keep making that, because they fell out with Tencent, and both companies threw their toys out the pram and sat there seeing who could ignore the other the hardest, so straight off the bat, you know we are dealing with professionals. New World has been in development for a few years now, and for some strange reason, Amazon didn't send me a beta key. Maybe the guy who was sending out beta keys got called away just before he reached my name and had to tuck Jeffrey into his nice shiny space suit. So I tweeted about this absolute miscarriage of justice, and lo and behold, the absolutely majestic Yorkshire tea-sipping knight of the realm himself, the spiffing Brit, sent me a beta code, like the absolute gentleman he is. So, new world. Basically, a few years ago, Amazon shouted, hey, who wants a full loot hardcore PvP territory control MMO? And about five people put their hands up. But then three of them went to play Mortal Online 2, and the other two realised, actually, they don't want that. So Amazon said, hey, who wants a PvP-focused crafting-heavy MMO with area control? And the entire player base of Life is Feudal, about 20 people, looked up and slowly started to show an interest. So then they released the alpha, and it turns out when you tell players who live to grief others to make their own fun, their version of fun actually isn't. So Amazon Games finally said, okay, how about we add some PvE challenges and an actual plot and make it somewhat solo-friendly and make PvP voluntary opt-in to prevent further griefing, and now we're getting somewhere. If you pre-ordered the game for $40, you'll get access to the beta. That's correct, you are paying to test their game. You would have assumed they could have taken some of the army of Amazon employees to test it, but no, clearly the QA budget went on Jeff's penis rocket. Opening cinematic, rainy streets with dude in cool metal mask, reminiscent of 16th century Spanish conquistadors. Such as Pedro de Valvida, Juan Pons de Leon, or Cortez from The Road to El Dorado. Chat to a spooky old man with red eyes in a bar. He gives the metal mask dude a magical box, and then we set off for adventure. We are a member of this guy's crew, and now the character creation begins. It's actually a very nice transition from cinematic to creation, but unlike more modern character creation engines, there are no sliders. You've got several preset faces and feature shapes, some hairstyles and a few hair colours. Not the best, not the worst. But what I'm thinking right now, and this thought will come up again often, is this doesn't feel like something made by a trillion dollar company. Character made and we log in. Now, I'm lucky to be playing at low load times because these queues on launch day were insane. Some people were waiting up to an hour, and as we'll see later, this game's servers are made of tissue paper and wishes. More cinematic, the whole ship is destroyed by a huge stone pillar rising out of the sea, and we wash up on the beach and the game begins. WASD movement, space to jump, but as we approach the captain, we get attacked and combat controls are shown via a quick time event. I don't hate this. It gives us the basics and lets us see the effect of each click. Nice and simple. Right mouse blocks, left mouse attacks, hold left click for heavy attack, press shift to dodge. You've got a stamina bar that's used up when dodging or blocking. It's basically cheap Dark Souls. Have a chat with the captain. He wants his box back, but instead of waiting, decides to melt. Doesn't even give us his sweet mask. Shame. Tab opens your inventory. This is laid out really nicely. One and two hotkeys bound to your main and secondary weapons. Quick item slots assigned to three, four, and five. Armor and skilling equipment are all shown. We equip a shield as the tutorial forces us to. We eat some food and then get exploring. How to describe combat? Imagine you ordered Dark Souls from Wish. This is what would arrive. Once you've clicked an attack, there is no animation cancelling. You can't block or roll away from an attack animation once you've started. And the enemy has no real telegraphing of attacks. There's no audio or visual clue they're going to attack, they just start the attack, and if you block a split second too late, you get hit. You just kind of need to know when to block. It's not bad by any means, it's perfectly serviceable. Now, I personally love Dark Souls combat, and I appreciate the slower, more tactical nature of choosing your move and living with the consequences of choosing the wrong one, but if you're after a more reaction-based action combat system, this will feel somewhat clunky and unresponsive. Kill this elite dude and get a skill point. Using a weapon increases your skill 
skills in it and all weapon skills level separately so you get better at whatever you use. I like this system, it rewards time and effort invested into your chosen style. Have a quick meander up this hill and we're greeted with the in-game actual start. And honestly, graphics are nice, music is great, atmosphere is lovely, combat is decent, UI is clean, it feels good good, but it still doesn't feel like a trillion dollar company has made it good. But I am still holding out hope. I mean, these guys made Airport Mania HD. I am sure they can deliver on the world's greatest MMO. So the game takes place on the Isle of Aeternum, and as we descend into this pit, we get to see the issue with Aeternum. The island is surrounded and sometimes covered in this stuff called corruption. And here's our old captain friend. He has been corrupted, and now we fight him. This is the first moment I start both having fun and feeling disappointed. This fight isn't bad from a superficial standpoint. Animations are smooth, combat sounds are nice, atmosphere is great, but mechanically it's very bare bones. Light attack, block, sometimes roll. This is a set piece of your game's opening and it feels somewhat lacklustre. Halfway through the fight, the captain blasts us with a beam of light and we are teleported inland. Now, depending on your server or your real life location or just how Jeffrey is feeling on any given day, you can actually start in a few separate places. Now, each start is basically identical. You'll have the same quests given to you by differently named but identical NPCs and you will learn the same skills. Now here's the biggest difference between this PvP and crafting focused territory control MMO and all of the other PvP and crafting focused territory control MMOs. New World actually has something resembling a plot or a narrative and an adventure line that you can follow to learn the basics. You know when people say this game doesn't hold your hand? Well I've explained before that's an awful way to introduce new players to your world. You need a small amount of hand holding until the player is confident enough to go and play solo and New World does seem to hit that balance quite nicely. There is no minimap, but there's also no auto-pathing. There is a compass to the top and a green mainline quest symbol to guide you though. The early quests are all voice acted and the voice acting is fine. It's not fantastic, it's just fine. Maybe some of the voice acting budget went on Jeff's soft little space booties, which I can only assume are lined with mink and probably light up as he runs. And now a small movement issue. It seems the motion capture budget ran out mid-stride because running forward takes about three steps and then locks you into this position. And this isn't just me, others are gliding around like this too. Now, full disclosure, this didn't happen when I played a few days ago. But I'm recording now and it's happening now, so this is what the world gets to see. If you run sideways, it's still fine. This only happens when you run directly forward. As you explore, gather resources and fight, you'll level up and you can spend your level up points on one of five skills. Strength, dexterity, intelligence, focus and constitution. Each stat actually shows you what weapon it affects. This is really nice design and makes choosing where to put your points much simpler. Movement with a weapon drawn is not only still bugged, but actually much, much funnier. This NPC sends me on a cooking quest and we get to open the journal. The quest journal is actually fine. Cleanly laid out, easy to follow and read. For all the mechanical issues the game has, the UI design is not one of them. Same goes for the map. The landmass is actually pretty small compared to other self-described hardcore PvP MMOs, which is a welcome relief. Too many MMOs make the map massive but forget to put anything in it. A giant open space doesn't mean anything if there's nothing to happen in that space. But oh, here's a nice feature. Resource spots, such as iron or flint or wood, aren't shown on the map, but they are shown in relation to a topographical key. You can see the resources you need and then locate the type of land you'll find it in. That would be a brilliant system if the majority of colours on the map weren't an almost identical shade of light brown. So as you adventure around Aeternum, you'll find skilling spots to interact with, shown by the little circle symbol. If you press E, you'll interact with them, pulling up a bush or cutting down a tree, and it does actually affect the in-game model, which is a really nice touch. As far as skilling is concerned, it's basically like giant 3D runescape, and that's not a bad thing. Pull up some plants, gather some sticks, and pick some flint up from the floor. I have to admit though, the casual in me is really, really missing having a minimap. I don't think that would ruin what you're going for here, game. Minimaps are normally quite well received. Back at the quest giver NPC, we use the campfire to craft. You can craft various things at major crafting stations in town. Everything from armor to weapons to ammunition is all craftable. It is entirely possible and indeed encouraged to be self-sufficient in this game. And the crafting menu is, again, really nicely laid out. Recipes on the left, selected one shown in the middle with what you need, and crafting button on the right. Nice and simple. 
We've made a knife from the gathered materials and now we need to hunt a boar for some food, so we silently skate up to this unsuspecting boar like the ninja we are and it doesn't even fight back. Like the boar doesn't even care that it's being attacked. Press E to gut the boar, gather some meat and run back to the camp. At this point I'm actually running sideways everywhere because it looks less stupid than just gliding around. Cook the food into better food, then get sent off to search a shipwreck. Environments are lovely. Music is understated and fitting. Light rays and reflections and textures on everything look nice. The actual level design is top notch. It's just the moment to moment gameplay, the combat and the general server status that's really letting this game down right now. First impressions are good apart from the mechanics. Around the land randomly, usually guarded by enemies, you'll find supply caches. Search them to get stuff from ammo to weapons to armor. They're basically a little reward for exploring and fighting. Talking of fighting, it's average. There are moments it shines, like when you've memorized an enemy's attack patterns and you can block or roll at the right time, wasting no time in dispatching them, or when you can chain a heavy attack and an ability to kill them quickly. Like, it's not a bad system, it's just... This game was made by a trillion dollar company. I'd expect something better than I've ever seen before, and that's one of the issues we'll come back to. The game is good, but it's not better than anything currently already out there. Here's a feature I quite like. Travelling to a new landmass shows you the suggested level of the area you've just arrived at in general, but there's nothing to stop you from travelling anywhere. See, this is the perfect amount of hand-holding. The game is saying, hey, I'm not going to stop you doing this, but just so you're aware, it's suggested for this level. It's giving the player all the information they need and then letting them make their own choice. It's the freedom to listen to advice or to ignore it, and this is great. There is a more elite enemy on the ship deck. They've got a shield, so you need to use a heavy attack to break the shield block. Some actual tactics. I like this. Another treasured cache gets me a cool spear. And then I get chased by a load of zombies. Again, I like this. It means even at low level, it's a very lethal MMO. You aren't unkillable. I actually wonder what PvP is like. I promise I will do some PvP before the video ends. Oh, awesome. The first spear skill is a throw, like a javelin. And you have to parkour over this ship's broken frame to gather some quest items. And oh damn, the spear throw hitbox is actually really nice. Projectiles are traveling 3D models and the enemy hitboxes are mapped really close to the enemy model. This level of accuracy is essential in an action game to make it feel fair. A few more quests get me a bow and then I'm sent to explore a local cave. The main problem here is wielding a bow makes the leg running glitch worse. It looks like I'm skiing along with one ski. In the cave, in quite an awesome touch, three of us seem to form this rather impromptu group. We don't talk to each other, we just communicate in the classic MMO way of jumping around and fighting the same stuff. And then, just as this unspoken bond of camaraderie grows almost as powerful as a spaceship engine, we reach the boss and the others run off and leave me alone like a forgotten Amazon parcel. The chaplain boss is pretty cool actually. Some minions, some attacks to dodge, my spear throw has a stun effect, so that's nice, and killing him gets me some more loot. This is basically what the PvE aspect of this game seems to be. Find some corrupted powerful NPCs guarding treasure, kill them, get treasure. Back outside I receive some territory points. With most of the PvP gameplay being focused on area control, your faction can own land masses or cities. And as you do stuff in each territory, you can earn territory points to unlock certain buffs while in that territory, like reduced trading tax on some market boards, increased experience, or more faction reputation gained when you do stuff. This is an interesting system that rewards map exploration, and we'll have to wait and see if it has engaging long-term benefits. Oh, you can also fast travel to places you've unlocked, but you need to spend a resource to do it, and I don't have any of that resource. But I really like this system. It means early game travel is essential, but late game travel gives you the choice of paying to get to places you've already been quicker. It's cost versus reward. Again, it's kind of similar to Dark Souls 1 with the Lord Vessel. The gameplay you've seen was recorded on a new account made to redo the starting zone, but I'm switching back to my main account because I've got a cool pirate costume and I want to do some PvP. The game has all the standard comforts of home, a personal bank account known as a storage shed, a market board auction house where players can buy and sell things, and honestly the town ambience is terrific. The armour and weapons are grounded and just stylized enough to be interesting without being garish. The general graphical style of the Spanish conquistadors is held really well. The colour palette of the bright green foliage contrasted with the darkened timber is visually gorgeous. 
There's a wealth of smaller touches like ferns and birds and tapestries hanging around. Visually, the towns are really fleshed out and they are a joy to walk around. The soundtrack is so well fit, you don't even notice how much it's enhancing the overall ambience. They have knocked environmental design out of the park. I mean, they've basically sent it into space, which is great because now Jeffrey can also enjoy it. And now comes the Joiner Faction moment. It's a territory control PvP game, so of course there are three factions who all absolutely hate each other and stand for different things, yet all somehow coexist in the same town. You've got the Marauders, big angry shouty boys who want to smash you in the face with the hammer of freedom. The Covenant, who are all religious zealots and want to hand out free hugs and see the good in everyone despite the fact there are literal zombies eating people's faces. And the clearly superior Syndicate, who are a bunch of super smart boys who think magic is cool and maybe we should try using that. Oh, quick bug, running toward a set of steps doesn't actually cause you to descend them properly by keeping you on the floor. You just shoot off the end and then crumple into a pile on the floor. This is dumb fix this. So I join the Syndicate boys, flag myself for PvP and head out into the wild. The global chat is saying something about a fort to the east being attacked so I get jogging. I may only be one man with a musket but I can hang back and snipe like the best of them. On my way there I run into someone from the opposite faction flagged for PvP. He is a higher level than me with more money, more weapons and more armour. He seems superior to me but I think I can win. He's Bezos, I'm Branson. Let's do this. God damn, I actually won. I'm gonna be real with you, I did not expect to win that fight. I guess that just goes to show, while Warhammers may be intimidating, spears are the best medieval weapon. Thanks, Lindy Beige. The fort is far to the east still, so I get running, running through higher level areas, avoiding roaming enemies, sometimes fighting them, and then we face the biggest hurdle so far, the most difficult enemy in the entire beta, the lag. Seriously, are the servers you are using made of the finest potato? Because it's been dire. Every world is lagging. Everyone is crashing. If this is a stress test, how many people were you actually expecting to play? You are a trillion dollar company. You've been advertising this game for five years. How were you surprised when people wanted to play the beta? Every MMO launch ever has been met with day one lag. You should have been prepared for this. Eventually the lag subsides and I build a camp. These are your mobile respawn points. You just need a few sticks and some flint and you can build them anywhere as long as you're not too close to civilization. And just as I'm about to heal up and go and join the Fort Assault team, the server completely crashes. Only the finest potato, eh Jeff? The finest potato. Right, so, new world. While I was streaming this a few days ago, I had a really good time. The environmental design is quality, the ambience is really immersive, and the UI design, both overlay and in menus, is fantastic. It's got enough guidance and early game quests to teach players all the basics, then it's got a fair amount of PvE content, like map completion and achievement hunting, that you've always got a goal to aim for. You've even got the daily resource quests you can collect from any of the main towns. The crafting is simple to understand, but covers a wide variety of weapons, armour and food that setting up your own build and kitting out your own inventory is going to take you a while. It's a solid adventure game. The PvP element right now seems fine, it's just being held back by the lag. The fact that I could defeat a higher level using movement and tactics shows it's not just number versus number. Skill does actually seem to matter, or it did when I was fighting. My main concern is Amazon is a trillion dollar company. This beta is a month away from full release and it's just not on the same level of quality as the current big MMOs. It's not got the storytelling and plot focus of Final Fantasy XIV. It's not got the depth of builds and deep lore of the Elder Scrolls Online. It's not got the platforming of Guild Wars 2. I can't comment on the end game because I don't think anyone's got there yet. It's not a fully hardcore PvP focused game like Mortal Online 2 or a fully PvE focused game like Neverwinter. It's a decent adventure game with decent enough graphics and voice acting and decent enough combat but it doesn't yet do anything, any single thing better than anyone else. Imagine if this game didn't have the Amazon name behind it and it launched from some no-name studio, would it still be making the waves it is? 
Probably not. I think Amazon are using their name recognition to get people to play. And they have the foundation for a really, really good MMO here. But it needs a bit more polish, some animation bugs fixing, tightening up the combat and speeding up some of the animations and sorting out the terrible lag. If Amazon are willing to invest time and effort into this game, it could be something fantastic. I can see the potential, but as it stands, I don't know what type of MMO player you want to appeal to. I don't see it dragging players away from any established game because it doesn't do any one thing better than anything else. It's not PvE or PvP focused enough to really hyper focus and capture that demographic. It seems to be trying to be quite good at everything instead of an industry leader at anything. When the game releases, I'll review it again and I'll give it a score out of 10. But until then, I will be grinding away, enjoying my time because it's not a terrible game. It's just not there yet. I also need to think of a way to repay the spiffing Brit for getting me the beta key. Hopefully he'll be happy with a box of tea bags and doesn't need me to do something stupid for a video idea. But until we know, cheers for watching. A massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support from just £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.